climate change. It's real. This video isn't going to focus on the fact that climate change has become an extremely controversial and partisan topic in the United States. It won't focus on the fact that this division is not due to a lack of scientific consensus around the issue. We're not going to talk about how societal structures assign a large amount of self-worth to your profession and productivity and how that's left a lot of people feeling personally attacked by the realities of how their work has contributed to climate change, however unintentional it was. And we're definitely not going to address how discrepancies in law enforcement have left small towns bankrupted while large companies continue to pollute our environments. What we are going to talk about is our future and how artificial intelligence might be a way to save us from climate change. Now, when I say save us, I mean that temporarily. Climate scientists have shown that while it's possible to reduce the speed at which climate change is progressing, it's unlikely that we'll be able to fully stop or reverse climate change. It's going to have an impact no matter what, and it's already having an impact now. From unusual weather patterns, to rising sea levels, to uncontrollable fires, we're seeing the impacts in our real lives right now. But where does AI come in? Well, let's start with something that you probably use pretty frequently. Oh. My neighbors here. Cars and traffic generally contribute a lot of pollution to the environment and the planet as a whole. In fact, a recent study came out that showed that things like Uber and Lyft are actually contributing to more car accidents and more air pollution than before we used ride sharing. However, the widespread use of autonomous vehicles has the potential to reduce some of that pollution. Autonomous vehicles are typically electric cars, so we would be less reliant on things like gasoline. And in theory, you could connect them to some sort of citywide optimization system that would reduce the amount of traffic and improve traffic efficiency so that we're using less energy to get from point A to point B. Now, we're likely still going to be using a lot of natural gas and pollution to manufacture cars. In fact, manufacturing cars is one of the big issues in reducing pollution. But we're already doing that right now, so it would bring down the pollution level somewhat. What else do you use pretty frequently? food, or at least I do. Climate change, among other things, has made it increasingly difficult for farmers to survive, either because of low crop yields that make it difficult for them to feed their families, or that make it difficult for them to sell enough crops to make a profit. However, there are a lot of people working to use AI to develop algorithms that can help farmers improve their crop yield. These solutions would help them monitor their crops reduce water usage, and overall just manage their crops better and at a fairly low cost. So these solutions could be deployed to third world countries where a lot of the effects of climate change on agriculture are already being felt by the people who live there. Personally, I like to eat, and so I'm hopeful that AI will be one of the things that help us keep our agricultural economy going. Okay, so let's look at a slightly bigger picture. One of the arguments often matched by groups who do not believe that climate change exists is that there's been a historic cyclic pattern of heating and cooling of the Earth that spans millennia. Now, climate scientists have been able to show that the trends that we're seeing right now don't actually match that pattern. And they did that by collecting a ton of data. And you know it likes a ton of data, AI. We can use AI to develop complex climate models that can be used to do anything from predicting how natural disasters are going to affect different populations to predicting how civilizations might adapt to changes that will result from global warming. Disaster models can help us mount more effective responses to natural disasters like hurricanes and forest fires. And modeling civilizations can help us get an idea of what the world will be like as climate change progresses as well as help us understand how changing our habits might positively or negatively affect that adaptation. And this isn't hypothetical, there are a ton of researchers working on this right now. Scientists at universities around the world are leveraging all of the data that we've collected from climate in order to develop these models that can help us understand how our societies are going to change. In the hopes that we can get a better idea of how our civilizations might have to adapt how we can put off the effects of climate change as long as possible, or even looking at simple things like how planting a tree in a city might reduce pollution. Now, like I said, AI can't save us from climate change forever. I'm not entirely sure that anything can other than moving to Mars. 
but it can give us more time to prepare for the serious impacts that climate change will have on our planet. Whether that preparation is reducing our reliance on things like natural gas, or packing up the whole planet and moving to Mars, I think we can all agree that we're going to need as much time as we can get. After all, climate change is already affecting us in our daily lives. How is it affecting you? Let me know in the comments. If you're interested in the current work in this area, you can check out a bunch of links that I put down in the description box. In particular, Andrew Nick, who's like the god of AI, is doing an AI for climate change workshop at Stanford where they're hoping to leverage all of the intelligence and business smarts and tech knowledge that's found in Silicon Valley towards developing solutions for climate change. Otherwise, if you like this video, you can let me know by subscribing to my channel and smashing that like button. You can also support me on Patreon, where you can get a sneak peek at the video topics for each upcoming month. And you can follow me on the social medias, of which there is only one, it's my Twitter. <laughs> but that's all I've got, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!